I thank the uh, Minority Leader uh, for this opportunity. Mr. President, uh, recently on this floor I spoke about the need to pass an Iran a Nuclear Agreement Review Act with robust, veto-proof bipartisan majorities. That's asking a lot. Uh, but I did so because this is the only chance we have to prevent President Obama from having a free and totally independent hand to conclude a flawed agreement with the government of Iran. We cannot allow that to happen. This Congress has pleaded for and worked for and will achieve the opportunity to play a major role in this decision, which is a decision of historic consequence. Let me repeat what I just said. This bill is the only chance we have now to prevent President Obama from having a completely free hand with no opportunity to address it in a bipartisan way to achieve success in rejecting a bad agreement. Passage of the bill before us will result in either forcing critical and absolutely necessary improvements in the deal now being cooked with our Secretary of State and the President and his people, or defeating a bad deal if a bad deal is presented to us. The stakes in this game are beyond calculation. I personally regard this as the most consequential issue of my entire public career. Our failure to have an opportunity to have this Congress, representatives of the American people, bring before the American people what is in this deal and the consequences if this deal is not a good deal that will prevent Iran from having nuclear weapon capability is absolutely essential. And the only chance we have to exercise our constitutional rights, which I believe, but our rights to address something of this consequence is to pass the corker Cardin bill. It's not the perfect bill. It's not the bill that we, I think, perhaps even Senator Corker would have preferred. But it's the, where we are, and it's how the only way we could get here and get a bipartisan support for this is to do this. But this gives us the opportunity to do the following. A congressional review period will be provided before implementation. An opportunity for Congress to vote on the agreement will be provided under Corker Cardin. A limitation on the President's use of waivers to suspend sanctions that have been put in place by this body will be taken away. The requirement that Congress receives the final deal will be lost. The requirement that the President certify that Iran is complying will be taken away. A mechanism for Congress to rapidly reimpose sanctions in the event of violations will be lost. And reporting on Iran's support for terrorism, ballistic missile development, and human rights violations will be lost. All of this is lost if we do not stand up together and insist on the right to engage in this. We must pass this uh, uh, or uh, the defeat uh, will be of historical consequence. This bill is the only chance, as I said, that Congress has to weigh in on a potential agreement. The stakes are too high, the consequences too great to exchange, uh, to engage in changes. Many well intended by my colleagues. Many statements have been made here that I endorse every word of what's been said. Amendments have been offered that, if it had not been offered by someone else uh, in a different uh, fashion, I would have uh, wanted to offer those. They, we can still offer those going forward. But in order to achieve the bipartisan support necessary to deny the President the opportunity to have a free hand in cutting any deal that he wants and the concessions already given should raise alarms in each of us is a support for this bill that is before us. What are the stakes? What are the consequences? Former Secretaries Kissinger and, and, and uh, Schultz and other foreign policy experts did a recent Wall Street Journal piece and said this. If the Middle East is proliferated and becomes host to a plethora of nuclear threshold states, several in mortal rivalry with each other, on what concept of nuclear deterrence or strategic stability will international security be based? They continue, it is in America's strategic interest to prevent 
the outbreak of a nuclear war and its catastrophic consequences. Nuclear arms must not be permitted to turn into conventional weapons. The passions of the region allied with weapons of mass destruction may imperil deepening American involvement. In closing, Mr. President, I want to address statements offered by some who argue that passing this bill is unnecessary because in 2017 we will have a new president in the White House and that president will be a Republican. Well, I hope that's so, but there's obviously no guarantee of that. But in the meantime, in the meantime, Iran will achieve a free hand to go forward with newly acquired wealth, the will to achieve that and the te technical capability to achieve nuclear weapons capability. Uh, let me conclude by uh, supporting a statement that was made by Max Boot, a respected foreign policy analyst. Skeptics about the looming nuclear accord with Iran may be taking comfort from the promises of Republican presidential candidates to tear up the treaty as soon as they reach the Oval Office. They shouldn't be, even assuming a Republican wins the White House next year, which is, as we know, not a certainty. Hopefully, that's from our standpoint, that we hope that's the case. Pulling out of the agreement won't fit, fix its def defects. It could, in fact, make the situation even worse. The U.S. would then get the worst of both worlds. Iran already would have been enriched by hundreds of billions of dollars of sanctions relief, and it would be well on its way to fielding nuclear weapons with de facto permission from the international community. To avoid this nightmare scenario, the best play from America's standpoint could well be to keep the accord in place or at least delay Iran's decisions to weaponize. In short, don't expect salvation in 2017. If the accord is signed, its consequences will be irrevocable. Whatever a future president does or does not do, Iran's hardline regime will be immeasurably strengthened by the agreement. That makes it all the more imperative to address the bad agreement now, not two years from now. I urge my colleagues, Democrats and Republicans, to vote to give Congress, this Congress, the right and the opportunity to scrutinize every single word of what is being negotiated uh, with the Iranians, uh, to inform the American people, and then achieve what I would hope to be an overwhelming rejection of the agreement if it does not achieve the goal of denying Iran its nuclear weapons capability. This is a vote before us. I think we need to look at what the end goal is and how we can best get there under the circumstances which we now are in. We would all like to be in a different position, but to achieve and get to this particular point, we are looking at this particular bill to give us a say, a meaningful say, and hope and the opportunity to reject a bad agreement, which at this particular point in time, in my view, uh, does not achieve what we need to achieve and should be thoroughly scrutinized by us and the American people. Mr. President, with that, I yield the floor.